Hi, this is Camila McDonald coming to you live from Camila's Kitchen, live from Levels, and you are watching Big Stone TV. Pleasant good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome once again to Big Stone Television. As you know, we continue to teach our youngsters about the grades of yesteryear so that we can improve the quality of regular music and we don't have to quarrel among ourselves when an outsider wins the prestigious Reggae Grammy Award. Now, a lot of our young musicians. They grow up loving music and they grow up hearing reggae music but they do not understand the fundamental and they do not understand the foundation and how these music were made. Hence, me opening this series, this episode of teaching our young Jamaicans about the greatness of their music, about the greatness of their heritage that is called reggae music. Today, we're going to be talking about an instrumentalist, one of the greatest trombonists the world has ever seen. For the older folks, they know who I'm talking about, but for the younger folks, he goes by the name Dan Drummond. Now, who was Dan Drummond? Well, Dan Drummond was born on the 12th of March, 1932. He was a Jamaican ska trombonist and composer. He was one of the original members of the Scatterlites and composed many of their tunes. Dan Drummond was born at the Jubilee Hospital in Kingston, Jamaica to Darius Monroe and Uriah Drummond. He was educated at Kingston Alpha's Boys School where he later taught his younger schoolmate Rico Rodriguez to play the trombone. His musical career began in 1950. At the Alpha Boys School, situated along the busy thoroughfare of South Camp Road in East Kingston, has over the years acquired the reputation of being the nursery for some of Jamaica's greatest musical legend. Driven by its motto, upwards and onwards, it became the repository for musical talent for more than three quarters of a century. The school, apart from providing a home for wayward and underprivileged boys, emphasized a craft-oriented curriculum. Woodworking, shoemaking, plumbing, tailor, printing, welding, electronics, agriculture, basic education, and music. Out of the music program grew the Alpha Music Band, which started in 1892. Down the years, it has produced such stalwart as the jazz great Joe Harriet and Dizzy Rees, world-rated saxophonist Wilton Gainier, UK chart-stopping trombonist Rico Rodriguez. Almost the entire on section of the incomparable Scatterlight band of the 1960s, in addition to vocalist Leroy Smart, Yellowman and many others, too numerous to mention, but perhaps one of the best known Alpha graduate was the world-rated trombonist Dan Drummond, who attended the institution between 1943 and 1950. The month of May will always be remembered by other music fans and historians as the one in which Drummond passed away. It was exactly 53 years ago. 
that this illustrious Jamaican met his demise under controversial circumstances. It was believed, but never confirmed, that the mentally challenged trombonist was beaten to death while an inmate at the Bellevue Hospital in East Kingston. Drummond's musical journey began when he entered the Alpha Boys School on December 10, 1943. Principal Sister Mary Ignatius Davis, shortly before her death on February 9, 2003, confirmed while providing supporting documents that Drummond's was nine years old on admission, which by simple mathematics who placed his birth in 1934 and contradicts many other theories. History has it that Drummond was taken there by his mother who could no longer control his truancy. Two years later, he was placed in the music band and taught the most awkward of instrument, the trombone. No instrument was quite like it, given its push and pull maneuvers and its queer seven position note scale. Yet, Drummond was able to master the instrument in almost no time, reinforcing the theory that there is a very thin line between a genius and a madman. He soon began entertaining his peers and teachers with his crisp, sharp, multiple short notes that many found difficult to pattern, creating some of the best musical arrangements in Jamaica's popular music, like Eastern Standard Time, Music Is My Occupation, and others which are still being imitated today. Drummond was critical to the emergence and development of Jamaica's popular music. While at Alpha, Drummond was described by Sister Ignatius as a very quiet, introspective boy who worked very hard, seldom smiled and spoke little. Idiosyncrasies which followed him through life and was perhaps symptomatic of his later demise. Upon his graduation from Alpha, Drummond was recommended to and accepted by the famous Eric Dean's All-Star Band as a trombonist. It was the beginning of a brand new world for the teenager whose earliest efforts were mainly jazz-oriented recordings, foremost among which was peace titled The Answer. By the mid-1950s, Drummond had established himself as the island top trombonist while some musicologists placed him among the top three in the world. Drummond also had stints with the Sonny Bradshaw and Kenny Williams Orchestra. His main influence then were the American Big Band Sound and the Jitterbug Boogie, which shaped his next set of recording, demonstrated by schooling the Duke, reload and looking through the window. During the mid-late 1950s, the influence of rhythm and blues and the sound system began to be felt in Jamaica. The music of the day was involved into something new and the American boogie, which had caught on in Jamaica, was making a transition into ska. Drummond became part of the musical craze when he joined the likes of Tammy McCook, Roland Alfonso, Johnny Moore, Jackie Too. Lloyd Nibs and others to form the Scatterlights Band in 1963. It was a period of enormous musical enjoyment as the band, with Drummond as the star act, recorded some memorable pieces like The Guns of Navarone, Man in the Street, Reload, Scrap Iron, Bridgeview, President Kennedy and Addis Ababa. He even had an appropriate piece titled this man is back, signaling his return to recording after one of his mental lapses. And who could ever forget those exhilarating trombone solos that popularized Justin Hines, Carrigal Brincom, Datty and Bonnie's Dearest and others. Drummond did the bulk of his recording for producers Clement Sir Cox and Dad and Arthur Reed, but also had some popular cuts for Randy's and Leslie Kong from whom he did the very mournful Snowboy and Fat Seven. He also graced producers Justin Yap with his present on the top 10 hit Confucius. 
Backed by the Scatalized Band, Drummond recorded close to 200 selections while writing or improvising on a vast amount. In addition, he had some memorable performances at clubs like the Bournemouth in Rockford, the Glass Bucket in Halfway Tree, the Silver Slipper in Crossroads, and several theatres across the island. Drummond, in fact, had a long history of mental illness and was hospitalized on a number of occasions. His condition worsened shortly after his last set of recordings with the Scatellites in 1964. And on that devastating day, on New Year's Eve day in 1965, in a fit of jealous rage, he stopped to death his girlfriend, Anita Mafood, a rumba dancer who performed under the name Margarita and then turn himself into the police. Legally represented by former Prime Minister Percival James Pattison, who was once manager of the band, he was tried, declared a criminal lunatic and committed to the Bellevue Asylum Hospital where he died on mysterious circumstances on May 6, 1969. While he accepted as a musical genius Drummond has left us more than a hundred improvised and original compositions which will not only continue to entertain us but to have become pieces for study by present and future generations of musicians. Dan Drummond, arguably the greatest trombonist of all time and a true born Jamaican. We employ and we beg and we ask the Minister of Culture, the Honorable Babsy Grains, to set up more institutions like the Alpha Boys School where we can teach the music and teach the music in its form so that we can have this music in generations to come. If I had the money, the Ambassador Theatre in Trench Town would be named the theater of performing arts because that is where some of the greats were birthed. The Ambassador Theater is responsible for 90% of the great musicians of yesteryear. The Veer John Opportunity Hour was slated there. Jimmy Cliff performed there. Ken Booth and all the greats of the greats performed there. So we should honor the ground of Trench Town see it as holy ground for reggae music and place the ambassador for performing arts at the ambassador theater jamaica we are blessed to have had a great man a great musician as the trombonist dan drummond we thank you dan drummond for your presence sir and we say condolences to your family or friends who have loved you over the years will never forget you and will always teach your greatness. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and share this video. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, now is the most appropriate time to do so. Thank you so much for watching.